scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So Jesus now comes representing the entire creation in that covenant and went through the punishment that man should go through. And the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. This was a revelation given to Isaiah the prophet. That he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. According to the teachings of great men like E.W. Kenyon. He now says when the legal claims of justice was now paid for. You see that now. The father's heart was satisfied. Jesus made a public show of them. He says triumphing over them in it now the final battle he goes to satan who the bible called the god of this world who had collected the keys of dominion from adam through deception and jesus collected that key and apostle peter teaches us that he now went somewhere that is called the bosom of abraham because the the bosom of abraham is not heaven oh i hope you know that there's no such place called the bosom of Abraham in heaven. Mm -mm. There is a throne. The Bible describes about 12 or 13 things that we know and see in heaven. The bosom of Abraham is not there. Apostle Peter said Jesus went there and preached the gospel to them. And they believed. What was the gospel? Listen, I'm here with you now. Remember the promise he made to you through Abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He was not talking of money. He was saying, Abraham, because of your covenant, the Jewish nation will come out and Jesus will come out of that nation and whoever believes just like you believe, it will be credited to him for righteousness. That promise, I have come. Do you believe? They say, we believe. They say, come, follow me. And that was how they started going out. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. After the defeat that happened in hell, Jesus led captivity. John, give me Ephesians. My spirit is fired up. Ah, yeah. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Let's start from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4. Did I get that right? Ephesians 4 from verse, um, he led captivity captive. Help me. Look for it for us, media. It should be helping me as I'm preaching. Ephesians, let me pull it up. He led captivity captive and he gave gift unto men. verse 8 thank you Ephesians 4 and verse 8 wherefore saith he when he ascended up on high he did what he led captivity captive in fact let's go to verse 6 let's start from there one God one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all now verse 7 pay attention he says but unto everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ uh-huh wherefore he said when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men verse 9 powerful information now now he that ascended 
but what is it that he also descended first to the what lower parts of the earth so jesus went there he's describing it now verse 10 and he descended and then when he was done he now came to the earth he ascended to finish his high priestly duty and then he came to charge the disciples this is the protocol that's what happened so he came out and the bible your bible says that when jesus was done now the issue of sin death the grave hell was about to be do you know that if jesus did not resurrect that means that number one death still had power because the last enemy to be destroyed is death and that also means that he's not exerted power over death over satan it means that he was trapped in hell so the bible says on the third day let me hurry up by the authority of the father resurrection when he resurrected first the bible did not say he resurrected alone the departed saints that they resurrected with him and walked around the streets of jerusalem and all men saw them are we together now all men saw them now when jesus resurrected i'm hurrying up because of time the bible tells us that mary saw him and she wanted to come and touch him she said rabboni he said don't touch me that means i'm not yet done with my i just came out of the grave but there is something i need to settle he now went to heaven paul was shown this when he taught the hebrew church that jesus now went to heaven he was no longer a savior in heaven he was a high priest and the lamb he carried his blood into that tabernacle are we together i've taught you and now poured that blood upon the altar to atone for the sin of man once and for all the moment he finished listen carefully the moment he finished triumphantly a coronation service was held in heaven for him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 now let this mind be in you please give it to us which was also in christ jesus verse 6 it says that although being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but for your sake and my sake verse 7 he made himself of no reputation took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became what obedient to death think about it obedient not obedient to the father obedient to death is another word of saying he became sin because whoever has that nature of sin is a slave to death he became obedient to death even the death on the cross verse 9 wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name at the resurrection of jesus watch this now a coronation service was held for him and when that coronation service was held that was when he was given the name lord l o r d now but the advantage is that he was not lord alone he was not king alone remember our communion mystery that everything he was doing you were doing it in him that's the part satan did not know because if all of us were to be saved every one of us will have to do what jesus did for ourselves and jesus went through all that and when he resurrected by the glory of the father satan was surprised because he found out now listen carefully he found out that there was a possibility that had come from the resurrection that man would not be able to have what was that possibility that because jesus rose again man is not only saved but man also will rise like him not just spiritually first like arising from the dead but that physically 
every time you receive eternal life into your spirit there are many things that you receive number one is the life of god but number two you receive something called the power of resurrection the power of resurrection part of it is for this age but part of it will be activated when the trumpet sounds follow me carefully we're discussing the doctrine of resurrection now there is a part of the power of resurrection that is in us but is not yet activated it will be activated the moment the sound of the trumpet is the signal that was given that the moment that sound comes everyone whether you are alive or you are dead in christ that software becomes activated and every the grave no matter where you died you must resurrect once you are in christ honor will be given to those who died in christ first we call this sleeping and then we who are alive and remain together will be caught up with him paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection let me tie up one or two things listen carefully there is a law according to hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 that it is appointed unto man to die once why is it appointed to man to die because of the original sin of man even though you are saved spiritually unfortunately this physical body still carries with it that nature of sin and that is the reason why deterioration are we together now and all these other things that happen to man now your spirit will never never have to be separated with god again because you have received jesus that oneness that union a reversal of what happened to adam but listen carefully it is appointed unto men please leave that scripture hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 once to die everybody say it is appointed it's not what you chose it's an appointment and it is appointed unto man to die once but after this that means death is not the end of all things listen carefully that though our outward man perish paul said but that there is something happening to our spirit man and that the real concern for the believer understand resurrection now is not so much your body paul is saying look relative to what has really happened to you the physical body is not so much the issue no matter how long you wait it is still appointed unto all men to die once you may ask a question and say apostle but how about enoch and elijah these are two men that the bible does not record that they died listen to me hear me i assure you i don't want to go into eschatology now but all of them will still taste death it is appointed unto man to die once the question is what is this death that he's talking about does it mean to get to a point where your body lies down no it is appointed unto all men listen carefully that there will be an event in their life when the spirit will be separated with this body if it happens earlier through what you call natural death or at the blast of the trumpet the bible says this is not the body that will carry the spirit it will still be changed within a moment a twinkling of an eye there are people who are not going to die physically they will not enter the grave however they will still taste of that event with that change that happens are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful it is appointed unto men to die once when jesus returns he's not going to find an empty earth there will still be people there but those who are alive physically and those who have gone before us the bible says honor will be given to them to rise up first resurrection and the possibility of that resurrection is because jesus now led the way and because we were in him when he died if he resurrected there is authorization for us to also resurrect are we together jesus could go to hades because death could now kill him he went there when he paid the price of justice he resurrected by the power of god he conquered the grave he conquered sin he conquered death and with that victory 
he now handed it to the believer listen carefully so the completion of the entire journey of redemption is not just giving your life to jesus is also understanding that one day one day that you have defeated death both spiritually and physically and that even if your outward man is ever shed away for your spirit to live you find hope because even though you die to die in christ means that that software was still in your spirit and that when the signal of the trumpet comes another body will be given to you and that spirit will return back that means everybody who died in christ we will still have that glorious reunion the resurrection now let me teach you another very powerful concept jesus himself was teaching john chapter 11 and verse 25 jesus said resurrection is a person not just an event the woman he was talking to was saying i know they've taught us in the temple that at the last day there will be such and such a resurrection jesus said no i am the resurrection and i am the life he said he that believeth in me read it please though he were dead yet shall he live what is this that jesus is saying jesus is saying even though i have conquered death and hell with respect to your mortal body listen carefully it is still possible that this body can transit and he teaches us in his pauline epistles that you never call a believer's transition death you call it what the idea of sleeping is that that person is not lost he's going to wake up even if he slept in 1904 it's just a long sleep he will wake up again this is what the bible calls the blessed hope the blessed hope is the hope of resurrection not just the hope of conquering sin and satan whatever it is so as we sojourn in this life as we celebrate easter on one hand we thank god for the victory that we now enjoy in this life but there is a blessed hope you know what that hope is that no matter what happens whether in life or in death we have already received that software that makes for resurrection first thessalonians chapter 4 i'll discuss one mystery and then we'll begin to pray first thessalonians please chapter 4 paul began to teach us himself about the idea from verse 13 we're reading 13 to 18 first thessalonians 4 13 okay but i would not have you ignorant say knowledge Paul wants to give us knowledge. I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are what? Are you seeing that Paul uses a term sleep? Please let me encourage you here. Every time you stand before a dead body of someone who received Jesus Christ in his lifetime, I want you to know that you are simply looking at the remains. The remains. That body you see will be replaced by another body it does not matter how it was battered it does not matter what happened that body will be will be given another body and the bible says that person is only sleeping i would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which do not have hope 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again everybody say died and rose again one more time say died and rose again your gospel must never end with jesus dying alone the resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father is what completes the gospel even so because of that them which also that sleep in jesus will god bring with him 15 he now teaches us this is what will happen this i say unto you by the word of the lord that which which are alive and remain 
unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep now notice how paul is saying asleep asleep 16 for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ he's explaining it now shall rise first not only first 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together the word caught up together is the word that we know to now to be rapture with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord this is what jesus died to achieve that eternal separation notice the bible does not talk about heaven here it says be with the lord the location is not the important thing it is the person we will be caught up in the air and we will be with the lord where i am there you may be also because you will be learning that heaven is not the only place god stays there is something called a new jerusalem and he's coming back to the recreated earth and when he comes back because of that covenant of oneness wherever he is he said i am the resurrection and the life if i resurrect you you will be with me everywhere i am there you will be also can i tell you this a day is going to come on earth look at me ladies and gentlemen i'm sure it will not be very long from now we will wake up one morning like every other day don't you think you are just going to hear bah. no if you didn't hear it and you are remaining it means you didn't make it look up let me teach you something laugh but take it serious because it will happen it's not a parable let me tell you what will happen the bible says in a moment in a twinkling of an eye please blink your eye for me that's it that is how fast it will happen repeat it again have you ever had an event so miraculous and so sudden it didn't say in five minutes in a moment a twinkling of an eye an event will happen on earth that has never been recorded billions of graves will open in a moment loved ones some of them you have never seen them all these people these missionaries that died inside holes water all kinds of places you would see a glorious transition that resurrection and the bible says we who are alive and remain in a twinkling of an eye to look like we're all going together and we will wave this version of earth goodbye with all the nonsense and all the wickedness and the fuel crisis and all the trouble that keep plaguing people on earth rejoice only if you are saved because i'm about to tell you the other side of the story listen carefully the bible says in that moment i don't mean to scare you but please listen to the other version the greatest catastrophe more than world war ii is what will be happening coincidentally because when about 2.6 billion people professing christians exit this earth in a moment what if the person exiting is the pilot flying you what if the person exiting is the one responsible for some nuclear plant somewhere you think they will wait for you no i mean what i'm saying that moment just like this and that's it you will see bibles on earth you will see hymn books left in churches unfortunately there will still be many people in those buildings and they will say what has suddenly happened the bible says two people will be lying together one will leave and leave the other one there others will be grinding their thing to go and cook for their families the other one will say no more issue of cooking i'm on my way going and you will see that glorious exit 
we will wave this version of earth goodbye do you know why because of the power of his resurrection at that point death will no longer have power over us we will not live by blood again no the reign of living by blood ends the moment that trumpet sounds the ministry of blood in our lives would have come to an end we will live by another life the reality the fullness of the earnest of that expectation that that ministry of the spirit the culmination of that salvation experience happens and we are with jesus and let me tell you this i don't mean to scare you it is that catastrophe on earth that will lead to the ministry of the antichrist are you seeing now the chaos in the earth will be too much there will be a need for a religious and a political leader to bring the earth in peace because the chaos will be too much nations and governments will crumble overnight and a world leader will come and say find peace his intelligence and his acumen he will he will bring a level of peace that you cannot imagine and with that peace the bible says for a period of about three and a half years and then he will unleash hell hell that will make world war ii look like humanitarian services i don't mean to scare you this is the word of god it's called written judgment no prayer warrior can change it All over the world and even in this place you are listening to me the resurrection is God's determination to see that we never end up in eternal damnation celebrating Easter by just eating chicken and jumping and saying whoa I'm happy is a complete waste of that that event the ceremony of it is not where the power comes from it is the commemoration of it the commemoration of it means that you take to heart the significance of it someday Jesus is going to come what's that song in my spirit take it high for me please Jesus Christ the Son of God you forgotten it sing it oh Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Hallelujah, he arose. The Prince of Peace arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, he arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Here is my question. When we all rise, and this life is over as we know it no more banks no more universities no more oil and gas no more certificates no more going to the mall to buy anything all the terrorists will leave them there i don't know who they will attack everything you've been trying to hide in your house you're about to go and leave it the pit you dug in your house to hide money you will leave it there as you go can i tell you i hate to be a bearer of bad news but some of you as you are now you are not going i'm not a prophet of doom it is by the integrity of god's word there are people who will laugh at us when they hear us say these things as though we're just doing some spiritual gibberish can i tell you everybody in hell is a believer the only difference is that they believe too late 
I don't want to scare you with all the eschatological realities that will happen after this first flight. That all those who do not make this first flight, let me tell you what will happen. The Bible says because of the torture and the persecution that will happen, that people will go to the mountain and beg death. This death you are running away from now. People will look for it and death will say, my ministry is over. Mm, I've not, I'm, I can't. People will beg death when hell and everything to be unleashed will be unleashed. Now, listen, please. I didn't come just to scare you, nor did I come to flatter you and lie to you. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away When I die Hallelujah by and by I will fly away Can I tell you this? The question I want to ask is some of you will be on your way going and you will look down and you will see your biological mother behind some of you will get up and you are already that power of resurrection is already in you but you will turn and see all your siblings they will say what is happening and you have to leave for many people it will be a service like this maybe it will even be a koinonia service just when i'm about to pick the mic and say hallelujah the only thing you will see is your mic dropping on the ground the fact that you can see it means you are in trouble <laughs> can i tell you please look up by the privilege of god's grace and by reason of what i do i'm not a medical doctor but I have stood before many dead bodies in my life. Many. I've been in a mortuary. I've been locked in a mortuary. Every time I look at a dead body, two things come to my mind. Number one, every dead body also saw a dead body in his lifetime. And now he is that dead body that others are looking at. Can I tell you this? Money will not resurrect you. Education will not resurrect you. Tithes and offerings will not resurrect you. Mm -mm. There is only one basis for the resurrection. Because he resurrected Jesus. He has given me the basis to know that in life and in death, Death has been defeated spiritually and will be perfected at that last trump. Why did I come to teach you today? So that as you celebrate Easter, you only celebrate if that power of resurrection has been deposited in you by reason of acknowledging the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus and placing your faith. Now you can celebrate. You can enjoy and know that I thank God for what has happened to me. Ladies and gentlemen, for a long time we heard that Jesus is coming soon. And for many people, they are laughing, coming soon, 2,000 years. There are two ways Jesus comes soon. He comes or you go. The day you leave, Jesus has come for you. Let me repeat, I'm not scaring you, you will live long. But can I tell you, even if you live 120 years, which is the benchmark we're giving, you can stretch through. Right? But I assure you by God, even Lazarus, who Jesus raised, still died. Everybody who was raised from the dead still died. So it is not just the physical living in this body.
I am the resurrection and I am the life. You can hear this preacher preaching and just laugh and say, wow, he's preaching well. On that day, when we leave, this sermon will be behind to teach you. Don't give your life to Christ under cruelty of the wickedness that will bedevil this world when we are gone. Do you know what it means for the earth to be pitched darkness? The Bible teaches that the evangelists that will remain when we are gone are the Jews. Because everyone who names the name of Christ will be gone. And it is only some of them who, although they came from Abraham, do not believe this truth. They will now go back. The Bible will suddenly become the bestseller after rapture. Everyone will be looking for the Bible to check what else will happen. We laughed at this group of people, laughing at them and saying they were wasting their times. Everybody will pick Bibles free and have to read. And they will find it there. People will cry and wail and say, God, come back. They say, no, this second one, it will not just be by you dying and going. The trumpet has sounded, it has sounded. Go and read your Bible and see the torture that is going to happen to people on account of the Antichrist. Thrown through fire, going through all of this that you cannot buy or sell until you receive that mark on your forehead or on on the, the side of your hands and those who escape they will go to the mountain and say fall on us and it will not come the only way out will be matayadom now you have a chance a cheap chance towards jesus i'm not scaring you it's not a lie it will happen there is no point sugarcoating it ladies and gentlemen it will happen the bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable for jesus to leave heaven and come and pay that price he knows what is at the other side of that disobedience my call for you tonight is are you going to allow the work of the cross his death his burial his resurrection to just waste like that because of stubbornness and rebellion remember the first thing that happened to man was disobedience and the first thing that happened to satan was rebellion do not allow a combination of rebellion and disobedience to separate you from him eternally there are people who have been martyred because of this gospel church history is full of men and women who died believing in jesus i can tell you even in death they cheated death my precious and wonderful mentor miles munro sadly he died through a plane crash it was so disheartening why would he die through a plane crash until i realized that he always said it that in death he would cheat death it is only your body that goes can i tell you this those who die huh few minutes before their actual death they don't feel any physical pain again you are the only one sympathizing with the pain of the body i can tell you this few minutes to their death the power of this body and the pain thereof does not hold on them again no matter how deteriorated the body is that transition is happening unto life eternal or unto eternal damnation please look up let me tell you this anybody who dies without jesus there is no repentance again there is no forgiveness again i repeat there is no repentance again it is painful but there are people who have died there is no record in scripture that from the time jesus died and resurrected anyone who died had the gospel preached to them in hell that happened before jesus resurrected remember lazarus he cried a cry and said please what i want you to do is let somebody from this place rise up and enter the world and go to my family members and tell them please this thing is real and hear the reply he said they have moses and they have the law if they don't listen to them even if somebody comes out of the grave today they will not listen to them you don't have to wait until a dead body resurrects and tells you it is real 
here and there there are people who have resurrected from the dead others have seen nonsense what they have seen we know from scripture that that thing is not it's not a revelation from scripture at all it's just divination they were deceived but there have been genuine encounters of people for this promise is unto you and to your children and listen to me don't sit back there saying i'm happy I'm, I'm glad i belong to jesus if you are the only one who lives out of a family of 200 people and you are the only one who lives you never got to tell them about jesus you know in church sometimes we're afraid of saying this other part because we say we don't want people let me tell you this being saved and being prepared for the resurrection is more than just trying to scare you jesus said when the spirit comes he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment i've not been to hell as a revelation so i will not come here and say oh, i was mm, i've not i've seen demons i've seen all kinds of wicked spirits but i've not been given the privilege to go to hell to see it but let me tell you the truth the lake of fire even hell is real believers at easter god mandates that we take a review number one of our lives and our destinies number two we become active intercessors for those who are not saved because let me tell you the catastrophe that happens when the church leaves even your arch enemy you will not want him to go through that kind of thing believe me i told you that the catastrophe that will come to earth will make world war ii look like humanitarian services what then is the significance of easter number one it is a time of gratitude to god for this eternal escape from damnation gratitude to god for using his blood and his sacrifice on the cross to bring for us this eternal escape from damnation translating us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his eternal son number two what is the significance of Easter? A moment of reflection. A moment of reflection. What does it mean to reflect? To think deeply. So that you continue to walk in the truths that you have received and so that you continue to guard jealously. In another teaching, I hope in one of the series before the year ends, we'll be able to deal with this issue i hope i'll remember to bring it once saved are you always saved i will answer it during that series and will hopefully bring to end the confusion of what we call eternal security or do you have to keep working out your salvation in both dimensions i have had disastrous imbalances on both sides and i trust that god will give us perspective to understand and we'll be answering questions like can a believer lose his salvation if yes what is the condition are we together so easter is a moment of number one thanksgiving number two sober reflection number three easter should be a moment of active soul winning active evangelism one of the greatest ways to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ is to be sure to declare to someone go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see, let me tell you Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am both old and new school. We have to be careful at some of these things we have thrown out. We have replaced some of these songs you see. I'm, I'm not talking about the songs. I'm talking about the ideas. The average believer today is not soul winning conscious. We are receiving conscious. 
don't get me wrong god wants to give us all things freely to enjoy but the average believer is not evangelical in his thinking especially pentecostals and charismatics soul winning zero our idea of soul winning sadly and respectfully for most people is just a strategy for addition of church membership now listen carefully listen carefully and there is nothing wrong with that because until you have membership you cannot train and mentor them the institution of the church is the only platform that is able to mentor and raise believers if everyone seated looking at me now covenants with god that to honor this easter lord i will bring you the gift of two souls three souls think how many people would be saved just during this period we used to sing a song those days. Please take it down for me so I don't shout. In Anglican. Must I go an empty hand? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty hand and go? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.